With a yo-ho-ho, -ho, it's Tale of the Toaster. Welcome to another Smash 3DS video. This time I'm doing it with... Nintendo 3. You can join the room at any point. Alright. Narutendo has requested, like, legalish stages only, so mostly Final Destination on this occasion. I feel like Arena Pharaoh. I'm just going with all kinds of things I don't normally pick. Sheik and Arena Pharaoh. It's not my normal style, but I'll give it a go. <laughs> Alright, so once once Narutendo's picked a character, we'll be ready to begin. Uh, Sheik's run. So stealthy. That. Oh, okay, so Arena of Pharaoh, there we go. Uh, right. You can pick whatever stage you like. Oh, okay. Just... <laughs> uh... it's not... I'm not the dictator who decides everything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's go with <laughs> just that. mess around with the bouncing fish while I wait. <laughs> but, yeah, I suspect that commentary-wise, we're mostly just going to be talking about thoughts on Smash 4 and speculation for Smash 5. So I guess I've got a quick question to start off with. Like, out of the three clones, the three super clones, Dr. Mario Sheik, not Sheik, Dr. Mario <laughs> Lucina and Dark Pit, if only one could come back for Smash 5, which would you pick? Uh, probably Dr. Mario, but like, not have his own slot. <laughs> I mean, does, oh, he just, right. does he have to have his own slot? Yes. Oh, that's man. the condition. Okay. Uh, yeah, still Dr. Mario, I guess. Yeah, Dr. Mario was definitely the one that got me most excited at first, because I really liked Mario in Brawl. But then when I actually got to try Dr. Mario in this one, I was a little disappointed, because Super Sheet doesn't hold him in the air, and I can't edge hog with him anymore, which takes away like the biggest strategy I had with Mario so on the whole I can't really use him and then like <laughs> oh god <laughs> what a thought so like with um, Lucina I feel she's the most deserving to be there like clone wise she's even though her moves are exactly the same as Marth's they've all got their own distinct style and she's the most different as a character herself from the source material like Dark Pit is just Dark Pit Mario is just Dr. Mario but Lucina is someone different altogether yeah that's a good point yeah and then Dark Pit himself I just love the character it's just a like emo version of Pit and makes me laugh that he's in there plus even the name's funny it's a Dark Pit that you <laughs> fall in oh so, yeah like, I never thought about that so, like, he, all three of them have something special for me. Dr. Mario, like him in Melee, generally still like him on the whole. Lucina's probably the most different and deserving, and then Dark Pit's the funniest. But if I had the option to choose only one, I think I'd go with Dark Pit, actually. It's because I really like the character. Unless they do, like, bring back Edge Hogging and make Super Sheet. Hold Dr. Mario in the air. Oh, yeah. the second hit of Vanish hurts now. That's good. <laughs> Quiet, Sheik, you're not Silver. <laughs> Mind you, Silver will probably appear in this video. Would you say you have a main in this one yet? Uh, yeah, Shulk. Oh, right, well, you can save him for last then. Yeah. Shulk's probably the one who's appeared the most in this series, but doesn't matter, he's popular for a reason. <laughs> uh, who's your main? Eh, you might as well wait and see. Because <laughs> this is this is the first video I've recorded since getting a new main. Uh. Up to this point, I've been a Rob main, because he's definitely my best in Brawl. But he's just not been working for me in this one. Like, he's been buffed in several ways, but his nerfs have affected me more. So I just haven't been able to main him. But someone else has gone miraculously well. I'd say Ganondorf's probably a secondary of mine as well, because I don't think I'd do anything spectacular with him, but somehow he just works. <laughs> yeah, Ganondorf's pretty strong in this. Yeah, at first I didn't think he looked like he'd gotten much better, but he really has. 
Yeah, just they just subtly. they just like buff the damage and knockback and stuff. Yeah, and the speed. He doesn't look yeah. that different, but he actually is. Yeah. So it works. Yep. So like, I guess the next question is, if you had to choose another Mario rep for Smash Five, there has to be one. <laughs> <laughs> Who's it gonna be? Oh man. Uh. Oh Toad, of course. Oh, right. You're one of those guys. <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> I'm really not a Toad supporter. I think he's just boring. But Who would you pick, then? I better not go into that before I offend somebody. <laughs> I just do think it would be boring to play as him, though, and don't create much hype. But I'd pick Paper Mario. Lame. What? Your, your, your choice is lame. <laughs> I mean, at least Toad is a unique character, but uh, Paper Mario is a paper version of Mario. Well, Toad just headbutts and punches weakly. <laughs> Alright, for Smash 6, I want Cardboard Peach. <laughs> well, that would just be the best idea ever. <laughs> there was a bit of a myth that the Smash 3DS update makes that move have a longer range, but I don't think that's actually true. Oh, Bloom a priority much. <laughs> I was really excited for Mega Man in the early days because of that move there, but it doesn't really work for me as well as I'd hoped. I'd go for a sliding attack Mega Man. <laughs> Not working. Say, so, well, fine then, who would you have as a second Sonic character? <laughs> you have to have one. Uh, probably Shadow. Really well, I, now? Well, I mean, okay, that's that's out of personal preference. I think a better choice would be, like, Knuckles, but that's just what I would want to see. Well, out of personal preference, I'd go with Silver, but... <laughs> but picking just the best choice on the whole, I guess it's got to be Knuckles. Shadow does have the fan demand, but he would just be kind of clonish, which in a way yeah. might be good, because... If, I do like that this game had those three super clones with Lucina and all that. Yeah. And with Smash 5, I'd kind of like to have some of those again, so Shadow could be a strong choice, but so would Silver. <laughs> uh, that's true. Just having another clone of Sonic. But I guess with third parties, you can't really just chuck in another one as a clone, because they have to be a big deal. <laughs> that's the only taunt you've got, but I do really like it. Oh, that's not the only one. I guess it's just the one you instinctively do. Uh, Same with me, I always go for my it's no use taunt, even though I have three others. Gerudo Valley was such a random stage choice, but I like that it's here. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of random. With the Wii U game, though, like, they have two excellent... They have one excellent Zelda stage and two that I really don't like. Like, Skyloft is just shaping up to be one of my favourite stages ever, along with Delfino Plaza and Great Bay. But Bridge of Eldin and Temple are two of my least favourite stages ever. I think they had uh, too many stages returned from Brawl. Yeah, the, the two stages do make sense, what with 8-player Smash, they need big stages. Yeah. And but... I guess Temple and Bridge of Eldin do fit that well. Yeah, but, but it feels like the majority of the stages in the game were in Brawl. That's kind of lame. <laughs> yeah, like the only returning stage that we know about so far that was not also in Brawl is Congo Jungle, meaning DK just gets one stage from every game in Smash 4. He's got Congo Jungle in uh, Smash Wii U, he's got Jungle Japes in this game, he's got <laughs> 75 meters back, which no one expected. Same with Mushroomy Kingdom. Congo and Jungle is in the Wii U version? Oh, you didn't know? No, I didn't know that. It's unlockable. We're not supposed to know about it yet, but oh. on, like, the the page on the website for 8-player Smash, it was showing which stages were available for 8-player, and Congo Jungle, even though it's not selectable for 8-man, was just on the image. Interesting. That's how we saw Smashville as well. We already knew about it because it was in a screenshot of Wario. But that was the only time we've seen it on the menu. 
Right. Thankfully, that's still not all the stages, because that image definitely did not have pack land on it. Oh, yeah. Well, uh... Like... That's kind of weird that they're having an N64 stage return. I hope there are others. Yeah, like Saffron City. I'll just bring yeah. back my favourite stage ever, Great Bay. As <laughs> if they're gone and now. They've already got two retro Zelda stages. <laughs> but I sure would love it. But I got Delfino Plaza, so I can't really complain. And I got a Woohoo Island stage, which was what I really wanted. All I could really ask for now is, like, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon stage for DLC on this game. <laughs> that was, like, my third dream stage behind Skyloft and Woohoo Island. But I knew that was always going to be unlikely. Oh, oh man, that oh, move sends you so far. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't really tried Mega Man out much since the demo, but he is still pretty fun. I do love that down there. See if I can land it. Oh, I oh, sort man. of did. It wasn't a spike, but I did land it. So, like, Zelda newcomers, what would you pick out of those for Smash 5, then? Uh, well, I mean, it depends on what shows up in new games, but for yeah. now, Impa. I'm still going to stick by Groose, even though it's totally unreasonable. <laughs> I, I just love the guy. <laughs> well, for a character yeah. I'd like to see, it'd probably be something different, something like weird like Vadi, maybe, but for the character that would make the most sense to me, it'd be Impo. Yeah. A lot of people were upset that we didn't get a sixth Zelda character in this game, but I yeah. kind of think it's not a big problem. We've got the most, we got the most important ones. Oh, oh yes! Nice spike. Yeah, we got the most important ones, and she got her own slot. So I don't think it was that important. Uh, yeah, but, like, they didn't really do, like, anything new with the Zelda characters at all. Like, I actually thought that was one of the biggest problems with the game. The, I'll go like, on main now. They didn't do anything with Ganondorf, and there's no new character. Like, it just... Uh, it feels like they should have done something. Oh, well, at least they got loads of broken items. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, the Gus Bellows and the Beetle are both just totally <laughs> stupid. <laughs> but I like them because they're from Skyward Sword, my favourite Zelda. <laughs> Which one is your favourite Zelda? Uh, Ocarina of Time. Yeah, fair enough. I don't often see people actually call that... Like I, often, I obviously hear it being called the best game of all time, but when I ask Zelda fans what's their favourite, I never hear that one. Uh, yeah, fewer and fewer people are, like, calling it their favourite. Ocarina of Time 3D was pretty much my first Zelda game. Huh, like, interesting. The, the first one I ever played was Phantom Hourglass, but I barely got anywhere in it and then gave up. <laughs> <laughs> and then didn't touch the entire series again for years. It huh. was only when Ocarina of Time 3D first came out that I gave Zelda another shot. Like, I have kind of mixed views on which ones I can and cannot play. Like, Ocarina of Time 3D, I beat it. Skyward Sword, I beat it. Minish Cap, I beat it. And Link's Awakening, I beat it. But the first two Zeldas, I've got no chance of ever beating them. <laughs> uh, Oracle of Ages, got that, gave up because I couldn't figure out what to do. Well, uh, Twilight just... Princess... Got it, the game broke. Got it again, the game broke again. So I just gave up. Wind Waker, I got so far, but then other games came out, which were more important. And then Wind Waker HD came out, which just removed all my desire to play the original game. And, like, Majora's Mask, my virtual console copy is just kind of broken, so it just refute Like... Even if I save the game using the Song of Time, I will still lose several masks, which I know you're not supposed to ever lose. So, that one's just not playable for me, even though it looks really good. And, like, which ones am I missing here? <laughs> Link Between Worlds, I've got it, but I haven't started it yet. <laughs> Is there any others left? Uh... CDI? I don't have a CDI. <laughs> No, I get, I'm sure there must be one obvious one I'm missing, but... N no, maybe not. Oh, well, I'll leave it at that, then. But out of the ones I have played to a reasonable extent, Skyward Sword is 
far and away my favourite. Minish Cap's probably my second favourite. Uh, I have seen like L an LP of Majora's Mask and uh, what's the other? Wind Waker. Yeah, but... Seen seen full LPs of those, and I would say <laughs> I like Skyward Sword more than them, based on what I've seen. Well, maybe Majora's Mask I would like if I got to have a proper go with it. Because I'm a massive fan of games that let you have different dialogue as the game progresses. And definitely Majora's Mask has lots of that. Just put on a different mask and speak to everyone. They'll say something different. But I just can't play it because of bloody virtual console. Huh. Well, I mean, uh, Majora's Mask you just play on an emulator. And not my style. Oh, you don't, you don't play emulators? No. Uh, Especially not N64, that wouldn't run well at all. Well, uh... But Wind Waker probably interests me the least, and Twilight Princess not that bothered about either. I've seen, like, a third of an LP of it. <laughs> so, second Xenoblade character, who would you pick there? And it can't be from Chronicles X. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dunban, probably. I'd want Ryan, but I think well, Ricky makes the most sense. I think I think Ryan is probably a better choice, uh, but I just love Dunban as a character. <laughs> yeah, and I just love Ryan. Oh, sorry for beating you all three times, but uh, that's, that's the right. end of the video, I'm afraid. Right. Nice speaking to you again after so long, anyway. Yeah, nice speaking to you too. Yep, so this has been Tale of the Toaster with Naruto 3. See you in another video. See you.